Crusades had in common besides the fact that salvation was their main goal. They were there to evangelize and to share the love of God. But before that could happen for somebody, there had to be repentance. All right. And the Lord right now is calling people to repent. He's calling for his church to repent. His church, we think that a lot of times that we walk upright and, and we look at the world with everything going on and say, well, that's not me. But you know, in looking at them, a lot of times we're judging. And yeah, that is us. We have a lot of things that need to take place in this church before revival can break out. So I'm just going to remind you of that repentance because you know what they did? They rushed the altar. I'm not asking you to rush the altar. I'm asking you to listen to the Lord. If the Lord leads you Come up, repent during worship, during the word. I don't care what, but don't leave her the same as what you came in. And I talk to you out in uh, Facebook land, internet land, the same thing. You get on your floor, get on your knees, and repent for the sins that God shows you. God is good all the time. And all the time, he is good. So what do you say that um, we... Uh, we remind ourselves how we do battle here, okay, and the Lord. Yeah? The battle belongs to who? The Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, this one will require hand clapping maybe, maybe a little bit of moving in the okay? You may have to move just a little bit, huh?
Praise the Lord.
He's not going to start now. He's not going to start now. There's somebody here today. You've been there. You're there right now. You're there saying, why bother? Why bother? Nothing's changed. Nothing's ever going to change. I'm hopeless. But you know what? We serve a God of hope. He's the same God that served and came and healed and he delivered the nation of Israel. He came when Jacob called. He came when Moses called. He came when his kings and princes and children called. He's the same God today. So whoever that is today, I'm telling you that he is the same God. And he has not abandoned you. And he's just waiting. But one instruction for you. You need to repent for the doubt and the unbelief you're walking in. The devil snookered you. The devil snookered you. He told you, why serve a God that nothing seems to change? Guys, it takes us sometimes to make the change happen. We have to walk in what he tells us to walk in. We have to repent. So if that's you, you know what he wants you to do. Hallelujah.
the Lord showed me, in fact, he had me so right on with you, and he had me zeroed in on you. I'm sorry, Teresa. You can stand there and put your hands right too with him. Okay, there we go, girl. Come on, right here, right here. The Lord wants to heal you, Sandy. He says, enough of this halfway stuff. Enough of this questioning. Enough of this questioning. He wants to touch you and he wants to heal you. He wants you to know, not that you don't know, but he wants you to know in a deeper way. He is a healer to you. first. We forget that we have a God that heals. It's hard to let him stand and heal her because it's the what ifs and the unknowns. What if, what if I don't walk in that healing right away? What if he doesn't really want to heal me? The questions we should ask him is what's within me that's blocking that healing? Do I have unforgiveness towards somebody? You know, I try my best to repent and forgive on a daily basis. I don't always remember to do that. But when I do, the Holy Spirit comes in and lifts off whatever that's been laying on me. Folks, today, He wants to pour into us a fresh new way, but it's going to take you something. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you that pride. It's going to cost you that thing you've been holding on to. Jesus. Listen, if you're holding on to unforgiveness, it ain't hurting the person that you keep unforgiveness to. Let me tell you, they are walking in freedom. Yes, but it is certainly holding you. It's like God just hung up that coat there, you, or you hung yourself up on the coat rack, and you can't get off because you're stuck until somebody comes along and lifts you up. And the only one that can do that is the Lord. And you, in partnership with him, you repenting and forgiving. So this next song is called New Wine. He cannot pour new wine into old wine skins. He cannot, will not, isn't going to happen. So if you want that new wine, you got something you got to do. We got something we got to do. Okay? God's got his hand on the storehouse. He has plans for the storehouse. The only one that holds him back is us. So let's say that today we make a move. Hmm? Let's make a move to allow him to make a new wineskin today. As my dear sister reminded me, it's only in the crushing, pressing and the crusting that we have a testimony to tell.
whatever you're comfortable with, you, neighbor and all. Thank you, Jesus. High five, you, Jesus. air hugs, whatever it is. And uh, would you think Marcia's um, my cousin can, uh, we have a new guy in the house. Marcia. Eric, another one, Eric. Okay, this is Eric and he and Anthony. I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to be joining us next week. Uh, we'll be doing probably the um, the videos as well. But we're going to move these guys in, and we're just going to shake it up just a little. What do you say? Are you for that? Yeah. No. Okay. Sorry, you can't play next week. I'm sorry. Are you for that? The storehouse. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. And then um, I have uh, this very special friend, <laughs> our pastor. Can you welcome Pastor D today? <laughs> pastor D is in the house. We know she is. We know she is. She's a coming. She's a coming down the road. Hi. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. And I don't have a puppy in here. Yeah, four-legged fur babies. Me and my four-legged fur babies. All right. your word, your will, your wonderful guidance of your Holy Spirit flow through this place. Amen. Lord, in every heart, mind, emotion, and physical body, Lord, use this vessel of clay and these lips of clay for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, I'm going to ask some of you as I repeat a specific title, say, career. I want you to stand when I say it. If this is what you do, where you are, okay, listen to me. A gardener, homemaker, engineer, pastor, nurse, secretary, financial administrator, editor, Handyman, social worker, driver, insurance agent, cleaning specialist, teacher, photographer. You need to stand out who driver. You go talk to you. Yeah, stand out. Do I have to be specific? I saw me. Forgive me. Caregiver. Chef. Accountant. Hospitality. Roofer. Construction. Wife, hubby, son, and sister, brother, father, mother, grandmother, uncle, niece, daughter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> And, and you, Craig, you my brother. Get up, buddy. You my brother. Yeah. I'm a brother guy. There you go. I want you to look around, everybody. Look around. Go ahead, look around. Look around. I'm going to tell you something here. All y'all standing, your identity is in what you do. Our message today, you may be seated. Now you got your stretch on. Life lock.
List number two. Friends, occupation, race, politics, marital status, age, religion, hobbies, economic statistics and statuses, ability, or even disability. <coughs> what is this a list of? This is how we identify one another. Right? Do we not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do. List number three. Worthless, rejected, unworthy, wretched, unqualified, shameful, undeserving, unsuitable, damaged, ugly, low self-esteem, unloved, abused. Some of you identify with that list. God said he wanted me to tell you he wants you to identify with him. Amen. Oh, don't give me no amen. You ain't heard nothing yet. You ain't heard nothing yet. You see, these are categories, roles. Tell me, do you see yourself in any of these categories? Probably multiple, multiple ones, don't you? Okay. Of course you did. And as you stood in the beginning, as you listened and I went on, the things got deeper. Oh, so first is how, every, you know, my career identifies me. Oh, then it's how people identify me. And then, oh, this is how I look at myself. You see how it got deeper? Listen to me something. Listen here. Sometimes when we do this, it can become a very uncomfortable. Let me give you the, the uh, uh, word for identity, the definition. It's, it is the distinguishing character. This will come back later. Or personality of an individual. So what makes up my identity? Your identity. How many of you have ever asked, who am I? None of you have ever done that. Seriously? Thank you. I have one opportunity. Thank you. Okay. So people can easily describe the aspects of their identity typically, look at this, and have a fairly strong sense of who they are if they know who they are. Did you get that? It's so simple, but it's like, you know. Look here, look here, here, here we go. Some of the things that I'm going to present today are things that you haven't heard before. Some you've heard. But it's time to recognize them and take them seriously. Yes. <laughs> Who, when they ever went to school in a business or whatever, you've had a lost and found box? Anybody, you know what that is? Amen, amen. Right? And, and, and you're talking about something, you go, what did I do with that? And you couldn't find it. You couldn't find it. What do you do? You go to the lost and found box, right? Yes. Right? And he goes, hey, I'm going to check there in case somebody picked it up and put it in there. Right. right? You go to the office, customer service, blah, blah, blah. Right? Right? Okay. So, um, God said some of y'all have lost and found boxes. See, because you're lost, you have no identity. Because you identify with all those lists, but not him. All right. yes. Amen. Yes. Some of them should be crying. Yes, they should. So, here's something. God asked me. Did you lose a little bit? What did you put in there? Look here. Is it a pearl worth a prize for you? Was his gospel meaning that much? But you kind of take it, close it up and put it in your drawer. You don't, you don't use this box. This is a little bit. You're a little bit lost. Not quite there yet. You know what I'm saying. Then there's some of you 
He says, you got a bigger box. You name it, you call it what you know that you've lost and put it in that box. You know exactly what it is. You knew exactly when I said it, what was going in that box. Then some of you have so much, look at this box, that you've lost. You have to dig through it to find out what it was that you needed to find. And God says on me, he says, you know, tell them, yeah, they're lost. He says, but it doesn't mean they can't be found. Still no kitties. <laughs> Here we go. So God says you've lost who you are. That's what he told me. Lost identity. Where or how did you lose it? How? At times we choose to listen to what others think of us. Careers, what they say. Or sometimes we're wrapped up in our self-egos. Of wanting to be like somebody else. You can't be me, I'm sorry. There's, I'm the only one that's different like this. There's no way. So just be at ease with that, okay? There you go. Be at ease with that. And then, sometimes though, of your unworthiness, and you feel indignant. You feel like you can't even go to God. So Psalm 34, 5, let's take a look at it. Lost identity. Here we go. Those who go to him for help are happy. So if you lost something, God, I'm going to come to you because you know what? I don't have to be disgraced. And knowing that I lost something and I kind of find it, I don't have to be ashamed of it. It's okay. Mm. God doesn't want you walking around like that. Ever, ever, ever. I'm going to do something here. Let's see. I think. Give me a minute. I've got to figure out what I'm doing. Let me see. All right, Lord. Help me figure this. Oh, Lord. Okay, so number two is uh, the identity crisis. And um, wait a minute here, what happened? This is not, okay. Oh, excuse me, hello? Yes, uh-huh. No way. You didn't. I am so sorry. You know, this is just the kind of stuff I have to tell you, know? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Get yeah. See, I knew they do that. Nobody listens to me. No one's paying attention to what I have to say. All right, well, you know, and it's going to fall apart now. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Did I do that? Yes, I did. And I did it on purpose. Why? You live on this. Some of you don't like that. And that's okay. Because I'm going to tell you anyway. Why? Because I love you. Yes. Because I love you. Yes. This here is one of the most distractive annoyances in my life. Yes. Do you know I get up and I'm not, you know, at first I check and say, okay, how did I sleep? Because you got a Fitbit or whatever. You know, you go check. And I'm like, yeah, I breathe pretty good. Okay, my oxygen level was blah, blah, blah. Hey, <laughs> I can still breathe. Okay. So you're looking at all this stuff and then you go to Facebook. Huh. My Lord. Okay. You don't die. Two hours 
hours later. Oh my God. And then you I don't have time. You need to be smacked. Give me my paddle. I'm going to whoop your butt. Yes, I said butt. You have time, but you have to make the time. Make the time for who's important in your life, and the first one ought to be God. Oh, hallelujah. You wonder, identity crisis. There are crises going all over the place since they threw stuff at us. 2019, I'm like, well, you can have it. I don't right. want it. Oh, that's right. It doesn't come from God. I don't want it, and I don't accept it. Amen. That's just me. And talk, talk to my husband. He's like, oh, <laughs> poor guy. I follow God. Praise the Lord. I do not follow man. Amen. I love my husband. But he is not my Lord. And he knows I love him. Ask him. I've been almost married 40 years. 40 years next year. And I, I told him when I dated him. And honey, he's probably going to listen to this later. Right now, he's listening to... Ring, ring, ring. He said, he's a boat race. Sorry. So, I said, one thing first. Let's get this straight. We're dating. You'll never be top of my list. Never. And he kind of looked at me, he's thrown back. What do you mean? You know, I'm this, you know. No, dude, you're a man. God will always come first. Because without him, I don't know how to live with you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. There you go. I'm just saying. Yeah. Still, I may not come back. They may not invite me back, but that's all right. <laughs> So a crisis, here, here, here you have to understand the definition of crisis, is of no fault of ours. A crisis is no fault of yours. And you can't do anything about it. It's out of your control. So this stuff is going on here. And when you turn on that TV, and the newsman's going all ballistic over stuff, Turn it off. Amen. And turn your spirit, your life on, and go to God. Jesus. Get the real news. Yes. The good news. Yes. Mm, that's all I'm... Mm, mm, mm. Life happens, y'all. Yes. Deal with it. With God. Amen. There you go. So what do you do, and how do you react? What do you do? We're going to look at 2 Timothy 1.7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice. The righteous shall take it by force, the word said. Right. Or fear. But he has given us a spirit. When you came to God, he said, look, what did Jesus say? I am sending someone that will guide you into all truths. So why you believe in every crisis that comes past your phone or TV or people? Mm -hmm. Look here. That spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment. Sometimes I wonder even about what's going on in my own mind. Jesus. We all be going crazy up in here. Mm -hmm. And personal discipline, yes, which are the abilities that result in a calm. You see how calm? Yeah. Calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. I'm trying to maintain my control up here. Okay? And what you see here is no different than in my own house. Any of y'all that really know me? How many years you know me, right? Here it is. Here it is. Same today. Same today. Woohoo! I enjoy life. I love life. Satan doesn't like it. Anyway, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Crises can be Monday. Mm -hmm. Pastor Leanne, health diagnoses. Healings. People need healings. What about a shelter, a place to go? Don't have a home. Don't have a roof over their head. Some people would be glad to have a, have a just have a, a place to just get out of the rain, get out of the heat. Right? Yes. Um, 
I need uh, my volunteers, please. Volunteers. See, people got bag ladies. You got the box lady up here. <laughs> You're going to go down there and stand behind these guys. Mm -mm. You should take that end, take one end, give her, take her cup. You go stand down there. Go under the, we're doing limbo. How low can you go? You take this one, you take this one. You go down there. Don't you knock that up, I worked on that. <laughs> Do you all remember when you were kids? You used to play telephone. Put up her. Put up her. Put up your ears. Put up your ears. Put up her. Here you go. Next one's called point three, identity fraud. Stretch that thing out, girl. You can't hear her. She's going to do nothing. I'm going to ask you something. This is really cool. Are you being misled by people's lies? Or even Satan's lies and opinions and views? Because see, the first one up here. I'm going to fix y'all. <laughs> Such as, listen to this. Being apathetic. I'm not important. Nobody loves me. They don't understand. I've got this emotional state that I can't handle. Everybody's after me. The enemy hates me. Of course he does. You stand up for God. I can't deal with this anymore. No, you can't. Who's the dude who was underneath the tree? Whoa, there's me, Lord. He was depressed in the Bible. But God said, I want angels to minister to him. Look okay, yeah. here. Here's another one. I'm going to share something with you. You return to your past, your past faults, sins. I call them sins because that's what they is. Because it's the sin that separates you from God. Mistakes are something that you make. Oops! Oh, oh, I dropped that. You, you know. No. A sin is something of, this, of the very depth and spirit of your soul that separates you from God. So I'm going to call it what it is. If I'm they're up in there, okay? God doesn't want you to live in a lie that somebody's telling you. Go ahead, girls, talk about it. Mm -hmm. Put up her. Put up here. Or what Satan's telling you. Come this way. Walk this way. Walk this way, y'all. Because you see, God's going to cut it. Now you may take your little cups to go sit down. Here's what happens. Take your cups. Go ahead, girls. You two girls go. You see, God wants to cut that, that, that connection that you have with Satan and your past. And the ones that you listen to, people you listen to. They keep bringing you down. Keep putting God down and raising him up. Because you see, Satan can only be at one place. He only sends his demons everywhere. God is everywhere. And he sends his angels. He, I have an angel. Got my back. Here, come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Got my back. But something you saw here. First you saw two children. And God, some of y'all are there. Your children. Holding on to your past things. You're immature. Yes, I say. But you know what? God says, as you mature in me, you're able to hear me. And he will not ever cut the ties because it's between you and him. You ladies may sit down. You can share it if you want, or you can drag each other across the room. <laughs> I know you don't like that. What it takes... And that for you to be set free is commitment. Where's that at? Where's it at? 
It has to be to God, not the things of the world, not what people say, not what even is in your own head and in your, you know, trust me. It's, you know, you, you can get it lost up in here. And unless, God, give me this for y'all. Proverbs is not up there. Proverbs 4.23, it says, be careful what you think. Be careful what you think. Because out of your thoughts, that's what runs your life. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. You like that? Wasn't that good? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Okay. James 4. Let's look at this. James 4, 6 through 8. But God shows us even more kindness than we deserve. You hear me? Scripture says God opposes arrogant people. Talking about people, don't be too proud to leave this place and not come to the altar. But He is kind. To those that humble themselves. The humble people that are willing. God, I'm a mess. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I need you. All the time. Every second of every day. Yeah. Come on. So place yourselves under God's authority. Not your own. Not other people's. Only in the aspect that they are taking you and drawing you away from the one who's called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Now here's here's the part that people they always don't 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 speak. They'll say, Oh, come close to God, you know, resist the devil, right? They don't resist the devil though. They try to get close to God without resisting the devil to stuff it's there. You've got to resist him first. And you tell him where to go. Tell him to go back to the pit of hell where he belongs Amen. all and take all your little demonic forces with you. Amen. Amen. No, you have no right, no reign, no rule over me. I belong to God. And God is my Lord, my Savior, my Father, my Comfort. He's everything to me. Then, look here, he can, he's going to have to run in the name of Jesus. Amen. Power in the name of Jesus. He says, come close to God. Hallelujah. And he will come close to you. Clean up your lives. Where's that? Where's that sanitary? Here we go. We got any of y'all need some of this right now? You need some of this here? You gotta clean this up. Clean up your lives. Clean out the viruses and diseases of sin that's going on in your life. Jesus. Clear your minds. Look at this, you doubters. Mm. Listen to this. God wants to take you. He don't want you to go back to your old past. This one told me last night, yesterday. I want to give you a past you can return to and remember that I was in it. Amen. You got that one? Not the past you were living before you knew it. Jesus. Oh, y'all how can y'all sit there? Oh, my Lord. He said it's not just the past, but it's the path that got you out of that and him running that way and you walking towards me. Remember what I've done for you. Just like he did with parting seeds, delivering the blind, setting captives free. Oh, come on, y'all. Right? He was in the past when you were there. He's right here in the present, and he's there for you in your future. Mm. Looky here. I'll tell you something. There's only one identity that's of importance, and that's your identity protection. Number four. How do you get protected? It's not man-made. It ain't come from China. It's God-made. God made it through His Son, Jesus Christ. It's not life lock. Because that's man-made. Not nor neither. See, we think we go to that, can I tell you something? <laughs> we had at one time, you know, we got a security system for the house years ago. And um, pay, was paying monthly for security 
Three years went by. We decided, look, we're not paying this anymore. We got a new system come in. Guy said, this thing's never been hooked up. <laughs> Three years I'm paying for something they've never even had. And you know when I turned to Pastor Eric and I said, dude, y'all know that, that's my thing. Dude, do you realize in three years we may have been paying men? And by the way, they gave us the whole system because we paid to that other people that didn't do anything. Anyway, see this is good. I said, did you see how God protected us? It's not our house. That's right. It's not our home. It's not our car. We are even not even our own. Hallelujah. I don't like that one. Isn't that good? We don't even belong to us. We belong to him. When you realize that, you can walk around just as like me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's the best, secure, strong, foundational protection you can have. But it's an eternal protection. And it's only in Christ when you rely on him alone in 1 Peter 1, 4 through 6. Now we hope for the blessings God has for his children. These blessings which cannot be destroyed. Y'all hear this? Or be spoiled or lose their beauty. See, some of y'all don't feel pretty. Don't see feel, feel pretty. God sees you as beautiful. They are kept in heaven for you. See, there's stuff waiting for us on the other side. It's not just, it's stuff that's eternal. Go on. God's power. You see, this protection is only by the power of God. Hallelujah. That's the only way you're going to be protected. Protects you through your faith until salvation is shown to you yes. at the end of time. See, end of time, that's another story. That's in like in the last days, end of the age things, which that's a different, I, I have that one, but I don't know if I'll get on that. Anyway. This makes you very happy. Even though now for a short time, different kinds of troubles may make you sad. But you see, you have that hope later of those things, those blessings. But the protection now until you get there. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? There you go. So when we all created in God's image, in Genesis 1.26, Pastor alluded on this a couple weeks back, then God said, God's words, let me tell you something, there is life. Amen. Life is, is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I said life because I don't like to speak death. I speak life. Amen. Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness. This is not a physical but a spiritual personality. So you think this is a personality? This is a character? Ah, you need to check out your spiritual personality. Your moral likeness. God showed me something very intense here. Check this out. One of the things that he wanted to get to was that mankind is made in the image of God. The likeness, the resemblance of your creator. Which means that you take on those very same spiritual attributes, the same moral qualities that he has, he wants to give to you. He wanted us to have, while we're living here and walking out these characteristics and the qualities of our Heavenly Father who loves us deeply. Let me tell you something. Psalm 139, 13 through 17. <clears throat> God said to me, he says, if you're, not, if you're not close to me, you'll be close to someone or something. I want to give you the definition of image. Now I'm going here. Image refers to a physical image. Typically are like our bodies. If you didn't have a body, your spirit couldn't be carried out to go over here and say, I love you so much. I, I got to tell you about someone that loves you even more than I do. And I care about you. You're having a tough time, aren't you? 
as a cash register. I'm getting ready to check out. Are you okay? I just said, come, come. Ask the guy over here by the church, the, the, all these. I see him. He's in the camp. I'm going, excuse me, wait a minute, y'all. Come here, buddy. Come here. Give me a hug. Come on. God, give me a hug. Come on. Give me a hug. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Let me go that way. Yeah. That's how you develop it. That's what you do. God didn't give you what you have to keep it for yourself. It's supposed to be bubbling up and overflowing. Let's read this. Beginning. You formed the way I think and feel. Do you? You put me together in my mother's womb. You know, I'm going to stop here right here. The mother's womb inside of a belly. Some of you know this, some of you don't. When you were conceived. It's a very wet, dark place. Muffled. David even knew that. He understood that because he said, you were there. Are y'all getting this? Yeah. You were in there putting all that together. Yes. I praise you because you made me in such a wonderful way. And I know how amazing that was. He realized it next. You could see my bones grow as my body took shape. Hidden in my mother's womb. You could see my body grow each passing day. You listed all my parts. And not one of them was missing. Some people say, well, I'm disabled. Or I have this. Or I've got that. I had a friend back in the day that when I was at work, he was, he was deaf, you know, and he couldn't speak. So I sat with him. He says, why am I like this? I said, I don't know why God made you that way, but I do know you can tell people about him that I never will because I don't understand it. Right. You see? So we all have a purpose. No matter where you are, ability or not ability, your thoughts are beyond my understanding. We're going to finish up on this. Look at here. Look at here. What are God's thoughts? They can't be measured. He said, and as you go on and you read on this, he talks about the grains of sand and all the deserts of the earth. That's how vast his thoughts are towards you. Love, joy, peace, grace, mercy, love, creativity, Goodness, care, restoration. Rescue me out of everything. You were given a little, little emblem. And given, everybody was given one. Do you see that blue side? You see that? Can you see yourself? Can you see yourself? Hmm. No, you can't. No, you can't. I don't have one. I'm here, Lord. I'm here. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay. Right here. You can kind of see yourself, but you're kind of, you know, it's like going into those, um, fun, not really, it ain't funny either. Because this don't look like, anyway, okay. God said he wanted me to show you this. He says, because this is what you see now on the earth, the blueness of the skies and things like that. He says, but there's coming a time. Look, look here. You're going to have to take that and move that. Move that off of there. It comes off. It took me a while, but I finally got it off. Can you, can you see it coming off? Yeah. Ooh, who's got theirs off? What do you see, Anthony? Who do, who do you see, Anthony? Who do you see? You see yourself, but you see that God who made you, Anthony. 
You need to appreciate that mark here. You need to appreciate it. you got to just keep bringing it down and around. It'll come off one of the edges it's already gone. You need to see who you are. You say, oh, wait a minute. Ooh, I don't like that. Wait a minute. Oh, man, I missed this spot shaving. God says, no, see, he goes beyond what you see here. you got to look beyond. There you go, buddy. Oh, it's got a peely on the back. You did the peely. Now it's a self-sticking mirror. You can stick it anywhere you want. That's what that's for. So he's going to, woo I got another one for you. See? So as he says, who do you see? That's what he kept asking me. Ask them, what do they see? Who do they see? Do they see me in them? Or do they just see themselves? Because when you begin to see God in that reflection, it doesn't matter what all this other stuff that we do. Your identity, you're not lost anymore, you're found. You don't have to believe the fraud anymore and the lies. You don't have to live in crises to crises. And you don't have to believe any lie other people are telling you. All you need to know is you can walk in the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, right? Amen? Amen. Amen. Bam! Get her done. We're going to do something very special. And in remembrance of all this, we're going to remember what Jesus did for us. Amen. On that cross, we're going to have communion. And I'm going to have one of my, my lovely assistants. One of my sisters, thank you, precious. She's going to pass them out to you. Now, I would... Please do me a favor for those that, you know, have children and they're old enough to understand what salvation is and that you know between you and them that they know what that is, their relationship with God, that they can take communion along with you as long as they know and understand it. But I would ask you while it's being passed around that you know through what I presented today through the will of God we need to examine ourselves on a regular basis. And that's why you take communion. You know, I was sharing with someone. I said, you know, I can remember years ago and even still to this day. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the cup and he took the, you know, he took the bread and he broke the bread. And, he, and God spoke to me years ago. He says, you know, Dorothy, it was a regular meal they normally would sit and have together. That night it was a little different. But you know what? Every time I sit down and eat, I think about God. You know why? I've got food to eat. Because God provided for me. Yes. He provided Jesus for me. That's my communion when I sit and eat, and I don't take it lightly. I don't gobble it all up. I savor every mouthful. You see, there was a time that I was on the streets, sleeping under bridges. Nothing over my head. I'd go from place to place to place to place, so I know what homelessness is. Of my own choice, because I had other stuff that I wanted to do and had in mind. But you see, God has something greater for you. This communion isn't just some, oh, oh, I better grab one so they don't know that I'm being thin. Thank you, my love. You're so Thank you. So, when you do this, I want you to take, we're going to take a moment, just do this, we're gonna, just for a moment. I want you to really, really take this stuff in here that we talked about. Know who you are before you take this. Thank him for what he is and who he is. Who you are in him. Thank you, Dad. Lord, let us repent. 
Repent means to turn away, walk the opposite direction, flee from it. So on the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, or opened it up, he broke it, because it was his body that was broken for us. There's healing. By whose stripes I am healed. He sent forth his word and healed them. I am the healed of the Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> and they took me in the chair. And in the same manner, he took a cup. My cup runs over to the Lord with thanksgiving, with appreciation that I never take what you've done for me for granted. Never. I could not be even be before you, my daddy God, if it weren't for my sins to be nailed to that cross like it was for Jesus and his blood that cleansed me because you don't see those sins anymore, Lord. You see my righteousness is in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. And they took the cup very carefully. I could quite so I could see my cup. Thank you, Daddy. And let me tell you, because you're created in God's image, some of those brothers and sisters that you go tail wagging at or gossiping about, they belong to God. They're his creation. Even the heathen, they just don't know they're saved yet. But it's up to us to do that. That's our job. Can I thank you today for being here? Being in the house of God. But I don't want you to stay here. I want you to take what he has given you. Give it freely as he freely gave you. I thank you, Daddy God, for the day. Lord, thank you for your, your perfect will to be done on this earth. Because this is where the kingdom resides. It's on this earth. It's from within us. That kingdom goes beyond. We have the authority and dominion, just like you gave Adam, to speak to things. And we don't have to walk in the mully grubs and be sad. You gave us life and more abundantly. And I ask that you help every person to be more than just touched, Lord. But they would sense your presence every single day that they live until you call them home, Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Y'all are awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know why? Because you're created by God. Now I have a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to share. I love you, babe. How many years? Twenty-six, seven. How old was Tori? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven years. That's, that's how long she still loves me. Thank you. Announcements. Yes, ma'am. Okay.
large group will be meeting next. No. Yeah, yeah that the first is on Friday. So next Saturday, the guardsmen will be meeting. They meet the first and third Saturday of every month, and that's in the fellowship hall. Women's Beach Getaway, um, September Woo! 29th through October 2nd. Uh, cost is two seventy five. As of right now, there's only four of us going. That's all who's paid. Wow. <laughs> As I'm looking at certain people going, hey, <laughs> you said you were coming. I haven't seen anybody. No, but we do need a head count very soon. Um, we have till the end of July before we have to decide how many rooms we need. So um, I just need to know who's coming so we can make sure we have the proper head count. Um, we are still collecting the supplies for the Ukraine relief. Um, if you have any, you just bring them up here, and then Brother Mark will be taking them to um, the church that is sending the Ukraine relief to Ukraine. Volunteers still needed. We still need weekly cleaning volunteers, and I am considering setting up, I'm going to set up a list. And if a family just wants to do it one Friday or one Saturday, we can have somebody here and you guys can just clean. Instead of just seeing that we seem to have an issue with not anybody wanting to help, um, if we just ask for one Friday or one Saturday and just do it as a family, bring your kids, teach them that serving the house of the Lord, serving the Lord is as simple as just running the vacuum, sweeping the floors. And it really doesn't take that long. I think this morning we did it in like 20 minutes. We had everything all ready to go. So um, we still need help with our tech team and our worship team. We still need the musicians, and God's going to bring those. We know He's bringing those. Discipleship tracks. So we are going to be doing a Saturday. Disciples of Tract, we already went through the first one, we're going to do the second one, and that one's going to be going over our gifts. So we're going to have a Saturday, we're going to, I think he said it would be like from 8 to 3, is what we'll be doing for that day. Um, we'll provide the lunch, um, but like I said, um, Kirk Zender, who's the one who wrote the books, is actually going to be facilitating for us, and um, we're going to go over what God has to do. You know, we're saved, but God still calls us to do something, and that's what we're going to figure out what it is so we can be the boss. Youth camps. So our youth camp and our kids camp is August 1st to the 5th, and that's at the Lake Classic Camp and Conference Center. Um, we, for the last, I believe, five or six years, um, have paid for our kids to go. <coughs> No cost to the families, because a lot of our kids come from one family, and it gets kind of expensive for the parents. Um, so we're asking if you want to participate, you know, help pay for one of the kids to go. Or if you can't pay for a full child to go, um, just do part partial. We'll cut the kids in half, and half of it will go. <laughs> I love to cut those kids in half sometimes. So, um, I believe it's I believe it's two hundred and fifty-five dollars for each kid to go. So, and we have seventeen people signed up to go. So that includes our workers, those who have volunteered, our youth, and our kids. And we're just excited. Cap makes a huge difference. Um, no, Pastor always says that he's he's a camp kid. My kids are camp kids, and they're both serving the Lord. So, um, it does make a huge difference in their lives. They come back changed.
we're just going to go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this word that you've given us. We thank you for the identity that you've given us in you instead of in ourselves. And we thank that you're steadfast, that you do not change, that you, have, you are always who you are. And Lord, as we walk out these doors, I pray that we are the light in the darkness. Amen. That we are the light to the world. And that we just can shine your love on someone this week. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.